So, when I talk about drones with anybody, they assume I'm talking about toys, much like what I have on the screen here behind me. And this is, it is a toy. It's a really expensive toy that costs about 1,500 euros. And they see a flying machine that has a camera on it. But I see something completely different. I see a multi-use platform that we can apply to many, many other technologies, and we can solve loads and loads of problems. So when I look at it, I see a 4K camera, which is TV quality. There is a company in Ireland that has developed an off-the-shelf app that you can apply to this toy drone. It can be used for search and rescue, and it can find somebody eight times faster, lost on the mountain or out on the moors, uh, than the traditional methods. So it's not really a toy, it's a platform. Um, this is very robust, it's almost fly out of the box. Uh, it's very fast, it travels like 40, 50 kilometers an hour, and uh, it's quite easy to use. So, my name is Ian Kiley. Drones have changed my life, and I'm going to show you, I hope today, how drones might change your life as things progress. Um, up until three years ago, I was a caterer, a full-time caterer. Uh, I had a serious injury in 2010, and I had another serious injury in 2014 and that ultimately led to my business winding up. I was in bed for an entire year, and <coughs> I was a complete technophobe. I decided I'd become a project manager, and in, while studying for project manager, I had to learn how to use a laptop first. So all of this is in the last three years. So I sat down, learned how to use my laptop, and started to become a project manager. And I thought, oh man, I can't sit at a desk. Like, I would be so bored for the rest of my life if I do this. So my friend got me interested in drones, and it's become so much of an obsession when I'm out with my friends, I'm not allowed to use the word drone. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you're droning on, and you're doing this, and whatever. So, zip, I'm not allowed to talk about it full stop. And they're really good lads. They reminded me when I was sick. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I got here and the type of stuff we're doing. So initially, I went to the Department of Social Protection and I wrecked their head for a year until they gave me money to go away because they had no box for aviation, they didn't know what a drone was, and I was like, just give me money and I'll leave. So they gave me 20,000 euros over two years to get started and I lived on beans. Um, myself and my colleagues got together and we came up with the idea of having a drone expo in Dublin. We rented the RDS and 1,800 people showed up to the first meeting and 2,500 people showed up to the second meeting. So I thought, hmm. We're onto something here. So we started developing ideas. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the ideas that we are working on. I'm going to show you a little bit about where we're going. And ultimately, I'm going to show you where I think drones are going to end up. And I mean, I could be a little bit off, but I think it's happening. So here we go. So this is a precision agriculture drone. I believe it's the only one in Ireland. Uh, this didn't start out as my project. My business partner came up with this project, and I thought he was mad and I knew nothing about agriculture. So when the project became my project, I thought, I have to learn a bit about this. So I went to my cousin's farm, and I followed him around, and I wrecked his head until I learned a little bit about drones. And then we went to the plowing championships. And then the plowing championships, the first thing farmer said was, you're a jackine, what the hell do you know about agriculture? <laughs> I was like, well, you're kind of right, but I know how to fly a drone, and I know how to make aerial robotics work. So you should listen to me a little bit. So. After a while, they started listening. And I was like, look, how would you like to reduce your chemical use by 80%? How would you like to not have to interact with your chemicals when it's spraying? How would you like to save a lot of money and have your drone working night and day? And they were like, mm, OK. But then they took a look at the drone that's on the screen there now. And that's just outside my office in Dublin. That's not on a farm. So they were like, 10 liters, 10 liters of liquid. That covers nothing. And I'm going, well, hang on a minute. So your laptop is flying your drone, and you're off doing something else. The drone flies out onto your farm. The multispectral camera on the front of the drone is hunting through your crop, looking for chemical structure of things that are not supposed to be there, an infestation, weeds, I mean, any of the above problems. So instead of spraying your entire farm with chemicals, the drone stops, identifies the weed, sprays just that 10 square feet, and then moves on. And this is completely autonomously. So the chemical comes out of the sprayer, and the, the rotor speed, the, the, the blades, drive the chemical down. So with traditional spraying, the wind is picking up that spray, it's getting into the hedgerow, it's killing bees, it's destroying your farm. So number one, we're only spraying small areas. Number two, we're not destroying the chemicals. But we can plant a lot more crop. We don't need to leave space at the edge of the field, and we don't need to leave tram lines down the center of the farm. So you're actually pr planting about 6% more crop. You're also not using diesel while the, the tractor is driving up and down your farm, and you're saving a lot of time. 
And when the, the drone can operate night and day, we're trying to teach this drone to actually go back, land, recharge itself, refill, and go back out. And it could be doing this in, in theory 24-7. Now, the one you see on the screen there, it's not quite there yet. It sometimes does its own thing, and I get a bit concerned when I climb in the van and hit automatic return to home. But we're getting there. It is going to be a really, really good technology when I stop being afraid of it. But <laughs> there are guys in China, and they're like working ahead. So when we first started this project, we bought an airframe from China. We brought it to Ireland. And some smarter guys than me in my office, we rebuilt it several times. So it doesn't quite look like it. It's a bit like Trigger's brush. You know, we've replaced so many parts. It's not the same drone that arrived in the first place. But it works. So. Farmers are taking this really seriously. Now, we can apply other drone operations to farms, too. So that first drone that I showed you, that can be used for 3D modeling. So you can take out a Google map on your, on your telemetry, which is the screen where that feeds you the data. You can outline your, your, your farm on the Google map, and you can set the drone off. And it will build you a realistic 3D model of your farm completely autonomously. I mean, this stuff is just amazing. It'll show you where there's poor planting. It'll show you where there was historical flooding. Like, it's just unbelievable. And then a couple of times we've been on farms and we've taken our drone and we've rounded up sheep and we've been out into the hills and we've identified sheep and brought them back and the farmer's like, Jesus, that's deadly. <laughs> give, give us a go. Uh, and I'm like, Anna, come on, it looks like a toy, but it's not quite there. So anyway, uh, moving a little bit on because we're going to have a few more slides. Part of what we do is we work with emergency services. In fact, it's probably the core part of our business at the moment. And I'm going to specifically talk about fire today. So up in the top left-hand corner, up here, that's actually my thermal image. See how hot I am? Um, and beside me is my business partner. So thermal cameras, we can give you a drone with a thermal camera for about 3,000 euros. So it's very, very inexpensive. But the things we can do with it are unbelievable. So you see the gorse fire there? That's actually Hoth Head. That was taken by Dublin Fire Brigade. We can put the drone up to 400 feet, and we can see the entire fire all at once. So the command center know how to give out good information. And if there are firemen trapped in that smoke and can't see the fire coming, we can give them real-time intel. Now, to add to that, here in Dublin, there is a company that's building tiny little screens that they'll be able to put on the inside of their visor. And when the firemen look up into the, into the, the top of their visor, they'll be able to see what's going on in the entire fire in real time, and they'll be able to see where their buddies are and if they're in trouble. We can take that many, many steps further. So if a fireman, that, that house there that you see burning, it, without a thermal camera, you wouldn't actually see the flames. And you could have a fireman standing on that roof, and he doesn't know the roof is on fire under him. But with a thermal image at 400 feet, you can actually see everything. So if we take it a step further, if somebody is lost in a fire, it takes a fire crew, you know, uh, obviously a lot of danger, but it takes them like half an hour to search a three-bedroom house. It's very, very slow moving. They can't see anything. They're using breathing apparatus. And it, it, obviously, the longer they're in the house, the more danger there is for them. So with a thermal camera, we can actually put the emissivity value of glass or other structures into the camera, which is, in simple terms, it's basically the chemical structure of the glass. So we can pass a laser from the camera through the glass, and we can search inside the room. Now, if there's a big fire, you're just going to get a big white patch. So we can also program the camera to block out any other heat source other than body temperature. So we can actually hunt around the house and tell the firemen in through their ear, going top of the stairs, turn right, person on the floor. The fire brigade are in and out in a very, very small portion of time. And obviously, the less time they're in there, the less chance of them being injured. There is also several other benefits. So we can obviously fly above the fire, and you could have an oil tank over here. And we can see the heat from the pipe working its way over the oil tank, so you can cut it off. Or you could identify chemicals before a fireman goes in there and basically save their lives. I mean, chemicals cause a lot of problems to firemen, and when, especially when they don't know they're there. And then, as well as that, you also have a, an overall view of what's going on. So if we take that on to the next slide, this here on the ground is called a tether station. Um, coming out of that black box on the ground is a high tensile cable and it's wrapped in Kevlar. And we plug that into the drone and it gives the drone endless power. So the drone can fly up to 400 hours from a fixed position on this tether as long as it's plugged into a wall or into a generator. And you go, well, why would you want to fly the drone for 400 hours? Well, if you have a flood scene that covers thousands of acres, you want to be able to see what's going on. People trapped in houses, cattle trapped, I mean, any list of things. So what this drone can do with the right type of camera, from that fixed position, we can actually search 300 square kilometers. There's an optical zoom 30 camera on it. 
So from two miles away, we can actually read your watch. So we can hunt the ground, but hunting in small, in small areas is very, or sorry, in a large area with a small camera is very, very difficult. So on the bottom of that drone up there, there is a silver box. And that silver box can give internet connectivity to up to 50 people in that 300 square kilometer area. And by doing so, they can actually contact us, tell us where they are, and we can guide boats into the person and we can have them out in half the time. We can also switch it over to a low light camera so we can search all night and all day and have the drone up there the whole time. So it's actually really, really brilliant. And this is the stuff that we're working on now. Uh, the Irish Civil Defence took receipt of two of these uh, two weeks ago. We've been working on training with them and it's my belief that all the emergency services will eventually roll these out. I've been over to France, I've met the guy that has invented this and they are coming up with some really, really awesome inventions to attach to this box. It's really exciting. So, pushing on a little bit. This is a drone taxi, and this is in Dubai. And I wrote about this, I was actually in Dubai two years ago, and I wrote an article, and in the article I said, uh, the sky will be a buzz with the sound of drones, and I was abused online. People were going, sure, what do you need to know? Uh, they were saying, you know nothing about drones, you have to be able to see your drone. But they really weren't thinking big enough, right? Drones don't need us to fly them. The word drone is autonomous by nature. So, if you had a grid system with a hive mind, the drones can all talk to each other. So in Dubai, this drone actually exists, and there are two other similar versions to it. And you get into it, you punch your address in, and it will take you to any other helipad in Dubai. So don't worry about the tr chronic traffic problem. Now, they've changed their laws, they're adopting this, this is coming, and they're building an Uber system. So the drone will just land, you'll get in, it'll take you to where you're going, it'll charge your credit card, and everything will be cool. And this woman here thinks I'm mad. Uh, I can see you nodding your head. <laughs> so, if we link this then to delivery systems, right, it's not unrealistic for, say, a farmer to be in Kilkenny and has something to break on his tractor and him to not be able to work for, like, up to a week waiting on something to be delivered. How cool would it be if he could order on his phone, have his phone pay for it, and actually have it in an hour? And this is possible. We can do this already. The laws don't allow us to do it but we are definitely moving that direction. And I have to say, here in Ireland, the Irish Aviation Authority are brilliant about letting us try new stuff. Some of the mad stuff we get up to these days. Every day is exciting. It's way better than working in the kitchen. <laughs> so I can see these delivery systems actually happening. Um, some people are skeptical, but I believe in the UK, they're actually looking at new legislation to make this work. I know that Amazon have a training facility in the UK, they've taken over a farm and they're actively doing deliveries. And this week, Mercedes announced their new drone and it's done 100 successful deliveries without having an accident. Sense and Avoid technology for drones was invented here in Dublin. Like Ireland is a hotbed of invention and innovation. And if you get an opportunity or you've got young kids that are into this technology, you should definitely, definitely encourage that. So, moving from taxis, I'm gonna go a little bit further where I think it's gonna end up. And you're all gonna think this is mad, but anyway. This next one. This actually exists in Dubai as well. I actually forgot this slide was here. And it's going to start playing now. That is a drone motorbike. And the police force have just been given a fleet of them. There is a, tra a chronic traffic problem. So rather than trying to deal with the traffic, they're going to fly over the traffic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're going to all laugh. This, this, this is coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've seen guys build bigger stuff than this. Anyway, it's coming. So... I just wanted you guys to see that, just so the next one doesn't seem so mad. <laughs> so, when I switch on to the next slide here, the one on the left, this exists. The one on the right is conceptual. So the one on the left is a drone that's about this size. They're testing it in Holland. The drone is actually a defibrillator, a fully functioning defibrillator. And there's a video online, you should go and look at it, Google drone taxi and, and check it out, it's really cool. Sorry, not drone taxi, drone ambulance. So, when you call from your mobile phone to the hospital and go, uh, to 999 or the equivalent, uh, somebody's having a heart attack, they automatically release the drone and the drone tracks you to your mobile phone. The, when you pick up the drone, a speaker switches on and there's a doctor talking to you through the speaker and he's looking at you through the camera. And he can, you can talk back to him. He instructs you what to do. You put the paddles onto the patient and he zaps the person. I'm sure there's a more technical word, but that's all I've got for today. Right? And you know, chances are you're going to save somebody's life. I mean, we've seen defibrillators appearing on streets all over the place. But it could take an ambulance 15, 20 minutes to get there. But the drone doesn't have to ab abide traffic lights. 
Um, it can fly in a direct line of sight. So, you know, it can travel at 54 or 55 miles an hour in a straight line and cover vast, vast distances very quickly. So, on the right there, this is a conceptual ambulance taxi, or ambulance, I've stuck taxi in my head. This is an ambulance. So, in the US, they have serious problems when there's a road accident. The traffic is so chronic, they can't actually get to the accident, and they're losing a lot of lives. This concept allows the doctor to be already on board the drone, the drone takes off, lands in the crash site, everything he needs to help the patient is, is already in the drone. They put the person onto it and avoid all the traffic and straight back. I mean, you could be across a city the size of Chicago in 10 minutes and have the person saved. So, in my opinion, this is where drones are going. They are definitely, definitely going to change your lives in some way, shape or form in the future. They may already be doing it and you just don't know about it. So, all I want to do is thank you very much for your time today and keep an open mind.